Hello and welcome back to Yukimo Village. This is MHG here and today I am going to cover a little bit about bow coatings. So, well, as you know, this bow that I'm currently using, the Queen Blaster, has the ability to use power, poison, paralyze, close range and pain coating. So, which is quite a lot. It's like basically just shy of the last two sleep and exhaust coating to be all. So anyway, the power coating, as the name itself um, already implies, it basically increases the damage that you do using the bow, or when you coat the arrows with power coating. Poison coating um, allows you to poison enemies, paralyze coating, if you stack enough paralyze damage onto the monster, you will paralyze it. Same for sleep coating and exhaust coating. Um, the more interesting one is the close range coating, because it's, the name doesn't really imply a lot of things here. So close range, close range coating, like, why would a bow want to go close range? So, firstly, the close range coating just does increase the melee damage of the bow, where you swing your arrow around. And if I am not wrong, or I'm not mistaken, it does also increase the damage of your arrows when you're literally in close range. Approximately, one hop distance away from the monster. So this actually goes pretty well with um, scatter type bows. Sorry, not scatter. Spread type bows, in which your critical distance is actually pretty close to the monster. So it's um, the damage increase. I'm not sure if it's equivalent to that of power coating or not. Uh, but in any case, it's still a slight boost from the normal damage, and it may or may not help it fighting a monster at all, so yeah. Pain coating on the other hand is uh, very obvious, it, it's basically a paint ball attached to a... It's a paint berry, it's made of a paint berry, so it, it serves as a paint ball essentially. So in any case, right now I'm just going to combine up some close range coatings to bring into another fight, into the next fight basically. I'm just gonna get 20 of them. Um, power coatings, I don't have enough nitrous rooms, but I'm just gonna craft like let's say another 20 and Ooh. poison I have tons of poison coating I don't need to worry I don't think I need paralyzed coatings just yet um, I'm the only thing I'm going to be fighting today is going to be the Volvidon or the Japanese name would be the Ranguro Tora which is yeah it's quite a mouthful so let's just call it Volvidon so I'm just gonna bring um, five poison coatings um, grab the 20 power coatings and 20 close range coatings. So one thing that doesn't really benefit um, what do you call it, um, bow users or range users in general in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd is that as you can see in the inventory there is no sort of a gunner pouch as that was introduced in um, the later versions. I know 4U has it, I'm not sure about 3U. So, the gunner pouch is actually this additional um, page on the uh, is it additional inventory slot uh, that it makes a fourth page essentially that is specially only for specially only for specially for gunner items. So yes, and here we go. So yeah, as I was saying, um, the it's not available and portable third which means um, it shares the same amount of slots um, as you would have to use it as in you have to stick your ammo in that three slots three page full worth yeah three, yeah yeah you, you get the point oh my god my mind is not working well it's been a long tiring day for me and oh I should be heading to area one so while we are here I would like to take the time to also gather up um, some killer beetles or hercuromes because they are needed for my pumpkin set which I cannot remember the name it's too complicated to pronounce for yeah it's too complicated to pronounce right now and my brain given my given the current state of my brain and it's obviously not functioning very well it is oh one hercuromb yes all right that's neat I need one more and that that would be good come on although in before desire sensor just you know screws this up completely. Yep. 
oh wells. We broke the bug net as well. So anyways, I um, remember me talking about the cat shrines. Like the black cats, they steal stuff from you and then they, they, they have a shrine. Yeah, this is, if I'm not wrong, this is one of the shrines. And as you can see, this yellow question mark appears when you approach it. So if you do have an, if you had an item stolen from you, you can just come over here and search this area and you'll get it back. So yeah, don't have to worry about losing it for good. I mean, of course, unless the quest ends before you can get the item. So, uh, those cats are there. I'm just gonna try and uh, scoot over to one side and get to area 4. There should be another bug catching area there. And subsequently we'll hit right into the volcano itself, which are areas 5 through 10. So yeah, and from there we'll, we'll face against the Volvidon, which is a very very interesting monster I must say. So, okay, no second Hercudrome, I am sad, but whatever. Life's like that. Desire Sensor likes to screw us up, so... <laughs> Alright, first up, I'm gonna just equip Poison Coating first. Oh, and sweet! Erex is um, giving us the damage buff, definitely useful. So, Vovidon is not here. He might start at Area 6, I am not too sure. But in any case, we're just going to go from 7, 6, 5, and then 8, 9, 10 if we really can't find him any other way. So he's not here. And I hate random losses, just saying. Yep. So the Vovidon is um, modeled after an armadillo. Or... Not necessarily armadillo. What? What? Is I can't remember what is it called. It's sort of a anteater kind of organism that has a armor. Yeah. So it's like an eater cross armadillo kind of inspira it's uh, from the insp uh, those two animals are the inspiration for its creation, I suppose. As you can see, its tongue is uh, very long, like a chameleon, lizard, whatever. And it's an insectivore. Insectivore meaning that it survives by eating insects. So, it's no disaster. Alright, straight up, I'm just gonna launch a volley of poison arrows right into him. So he doesn't he doesn't have um, the, the raws that will flinch uh, Hunter, but whoa, he does have those paralyzing speeds. And he moves around by rolling. He has the bear hugs as well. So this should give you a good idea that he's actually belonging to the um, sort of the beast class of monsters. So yeah, he's already poisoned. I shall... I shall keep the poison coating on and just keep um, giving him that dosage, the double dosage and the more dosage. Oh, that, that was bad. So yeah, because I'm a spread bow, my critical distance is a little bit closer than that of the rapid or the pierce bow. Oh wow, I was not expecting, expecting him to go this way. So yeah, I have to stay practically almost at melee range. Okay, he's angry for sure. And his breakable parts are not a lot to be honest, his breakable parts are only his shell and his on the back. Oh my god, what a jump. So yeah. Okay, oh, back roll, that's that's pretty interesting. Just gonna keep avoiding his rolls. He's like some bowling ball, so I don't want to be the pit that he gets a strike on. Okay, I left two point holdings. He's gonna slam, whoa, Eric nearly got squished right there. Alright, there goes my poison coatings. Whoa, nope. Yeah, oh, and that. That is Tremor. So basically, um, certain attacks would um, cause your hunt, like cause the earth to shake a bit more than usual, and basically it causes your hunter to flinch. That is Tremor. So you can be countered um, with Tremor resistance, Pretty much like how you can counter, sort of negate wind pressure with uh, skills as well, and you can negate draws with uh, your plugs, uh, which is also another skill. So, all of these um, additional effects that monsters can create can be negated. It's, uh, and you can actually design armor sets to face off against certain monsters based on 
what effects they have, and what skills, what charms, what armor sets you're using. So yeah. So in any case, now, whoa, that was close. The tongue is a, a weapon, of use it. you can use it as a weapon as well, so you have to be mindful of that. So right now, I'm equipping the close range coding try and do as much as damage as possible to him in the close range so while he's just bouncing around like a ball which is annoying and rolling around like a ball oh gosh that was close um I'm gonna roll again and I would like to break his shell if you allow me to oh dear come on ah whoa 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 his rolling really throws me off sometimes. <laughs> like, I just... It's quite hard to predict where you roll. I mean, you can tell from the way he's leaning. Like, but sometimes it's... If you don't pay close enough attention, and uh... If you're tired, yeah, you may just miss, out, miss it out quite easily. Okay. He's rolling and rolling. Like... Oh, there goes the tongue. Yep. So he does have a tail right there, where he looks around. Aim. There you go, you can see he, he actually looks to his left before he shoots out his tongue. The indicator that he's aiming. It actually makes me wonder, does he actually, whoa, does he actually see, like, by the side or something? I'm not sure. What are you doing, boy? Um, um, okay, would you, would you please? Okay, it seems like he's he's going for going to leave the map. Uh, he, he's doing it in really really short bursts, which is quite weird. Like, yeah, I have, I have no idea what's up. To. <laughs> Why wouldn't he like you know do one, one, just one good long row and get the hell out of here? Ah, whatever. So anyway, um, you you notice that um, the supply box gives uh gave us a. A couple of deodorants as well, and why is that? So it's because, oh, wow! I just wasted that last coating so bad. I'm actually tempted to not use this coating, but uh, because it's how precious it is and how hard is it to get nitro from this early game. So yeah, I guess I'll just hold on to it and not use it. Half ah, Anyway, going back to the deodorants. So why would the supply box give us deodorants? So um. He has yet to do it, but this guy can release pretty bad gas. And yes, so basically they combined in the skunk factor. Oh, I broke a shell. So yes, this guy is more than just an armored ant eater. He is also a skunk. And I, I mean it quite literally in the fact that he is able to release uh, like smelly fumes that would cause your character to literally stink and when that happens your character is unable to use items because your character goes like oh my god it's so smelly I don't want to drink anything or eat anything or just be save my life I mean even if it saves his life but yeah so ah it's amazing that okay it's not amazing but it's it's just sad that I can't get him to show that move then again maybe I didn't give him a chance I don't know. So, oh, actually, hmm, should I? Ah, forget it. Basically, um, when I say should I, what I meant was the volcano is actually the one of the. It's the first area where you can actually carry out charm farming or talisman mining. Where in areas, basically in areas um eight and nine, there are actually throughout the entire volcano. There are, there are quite a number of mining areas where you are able to get um, talismans of them. And as you know, talism talismans have skill points, which are randomized when you find them. And But it's also dependent on what rank they are when you find them. Like, they have a... Uh, I can't remember what's the, the, the name of each rank, but basically, the higher the rarity, the better the skills you can possibly get. And so... Oh, nice ball. And so, we're in low rank right now, so I would say that um, getting any kind of charm, no matter how good, would still be 
would more or less, not not hundred percent, but would more or less still be outscaled when we hit into high rank. And so I don't find it very worthwhile farming right now, but um I may be wrong, I mean people make wrong decisions. I'm people, I'm human. Yeah. Oh no, ow! Damn it, damn it. Yeah, that that was a very wrong choice by me anyways. <laughs> So would you kindly come over here? I don't want to, you know, go to the next map just yet. At least not until after I attempt to kill you. Oh, oh wait, you're dead. So yeah, one more thing annoying about the volcano is that um you saw that huge fireworks display coming out from the ground like right here. Yeah, right, right, that's another screen I'm looking at. So yeah. Um occasionally random stuff starts erupting from the ground. Ran not random stuff, but you know, lava just erupts from the ground and uh it can get really annoying <laughs> if you don't pay attention to it. You are just trying to dodge and like you know get out of the way of a monster, and you run right into it, which doesn't really help. But I mean, it may help sometimes. But uh, yeah, all in all, it's just something else you have to look out for. So yeah, um, I got some managed to mine some stuff over here. I believe there is another mining spot right there. Can I make it in time? Come on, yes, I think I can mine at least a good one or two times out of it. Aqua Blue Jewel. No talisman though, I think they're only at area 9? Yeah, oh well. Well, at least we still get something. Better than nothing. And yes, it's hot. My character is just like panting and sweating. And the cats are just popping out of the ground, so there you go. So, Perilous is set, uh huh. Ovidon stuff, okay. Ooh, Dragonfell Berry, nice. So, so, sadly, we still have not have enough um, materials to finish crafting the pumpkin suit thing, but I do have some parts of it crafted already and waiting. So, what I actually need is um, to get, as I said, one more Herculdrome for, I believe, the, the vest? No, this is the pill extract. Whoops. Then the Hergidrome probably goes here. No, that's a killer bit of, And I have that already. Wait, where does the Hergidrome go? No, this is not the pill extract. Oh gosh, I'm terrible at this. Oh, it's here. So I have the. I need to get just one more Hergidrome to get the, the helmet. I already have the gauntlets um, ready. So I have the waist ready as well. I just need the leggings, which is um, which I need pill extract for a total of three pill extracts for the leggings and the plate, the chest plate, and one more drone for the helmet. So, well, since we unlocked the Vovidon one, so let let just let's just take a look at these the skills it gives for the gunner. Okay, it gives fire resistance, hit resistance, evasion, and negative cold resistance. So in general, it's just um. A set that allows you to survive in the hot environments. Uh, you, with sufficient heat resistance, um, you can basically negate the environmental effects of the volcano or hot places, so you don't have to drink cold drinks. And evasion is, yeah, basically evasion. You get extra vulnerability time when you dodge. So fire resistance is um, basically increased. You take increased damage reduction which means you take less damage from fire attacks. As simple as that. And cold resistance is... Um, e when you're in cold areas like the Tundra, you if you have positive cold resistance, you feel warm enough and you don't need to drink hot drinks, which is actually a thing if you equip the Lagombi set. There you go, cold resistance. And so basically heat resistance and cold resistance are basically opposites. So if you have negative of each, um, you take extra damage if you have negative heat resistance in hot places and you lose stamina extra quickly in um, cold places when you have negative cold resistance. So yeah, uh, that's probably a bit too much information. And that is all for now. So we will keep working hard in order to complete the pumpkin set. And um, yeah, hope to see you again next time. So like, subscribe, comment, do the socials if you would please. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, watching, what, watching. Thank you very much for watching. Um, it's been NH, NH Geek here, so I hope you enjoyed your time. Signing out.